Would you like to learn how to make a great tasting and great looking keto bread? Well today on WTF we're going to show you how to do just that and turn that keto bread into a delicious BLT. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every Tuesday we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you recipes and demos that you can do in your own kitchen. So remember to subscribe and ring the bell, and that way you'll get notified of our content when it comes out every single Tuesday. Today, we're going to be covering, I would say, uh, one of the most on-demand questions that we received over the past year, which is how do you make a really good tasting keto bread? So as you can see, we've certainly done our R&D and Scott's had to eat a lot of keto <laughs> bread to get to this point, but we finally have a recipe that we're happy enough with in order to share with you. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Scott to kind of talk about, you know, like what do you look for in a good keto bread and kind of, you know, what, um, what are the key building blocks that go into uh, having something that just doesn't look like a lump of coal, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, keto bread is is a difficult thing, and uh, I did the testing, so I would know. Uh, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to reduce the amount of carbs for a keto diet, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to have basically under 20 net carbs for the day. So that that doesn't include fiber or anything like that. So there's a lot of ingredients here that have a lot of fiber in them. But those get negated. So you want 20 net carbs. So that means you're going to eat a lot of protein and mm -hmm. you're going to eat a lot of fats. Uh, and making a bread out of just protein and fats is difficult. Mm -hmm. But with the, the ingredients that we've come up with to really help try and make this bread the way it is, you get around two grams of carbs per slice of bread, which okay. is a dramatic reduction. Uh, and that, that also depends on how thick the slice of bread that you, you have is. Uh, so really, it's just about, you know, kind of let's talk about this recipe, like get into the recipe, because once okay. we get into it, we really got to talk about, you know, what is the building blocks of making this work. Sure. So, you can't use flour. Mm -hmm. That's a huge one. Bread is based on flour. Mm -hmm. But what you can use is the vital wheat gluten from flour, right? And that's a big building block of making bread work. Mm -hmm. So we have vital wheat gluten, and that actually has a little bit of net carbs left over from you know the bread. So that's really where the majority of our carbs come from. On top of that, we want to build up this gluten. We want to help this gluten get the best structure possible. And we have sodium caseinate here. Sodium caseinate is a milk protein, but sodium caseinate helps bond to that gluten and make stronger gluten strands that will hold up this bread. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of flaxseed meal. This adds texture and uh, a, a little bit more richer mouthfeel. We also have yeast. So we have a gold yeast here. This is great because this yeast works with anything that you do. And the reason why you want to use yeast in here, it does give it a little bit of a lift, mm -hmm. right? So it helps to that, that rise of the dough because you don't want like a clump or a lump right. of coal. Like, you know, you don't want to be able to build a house with the bricks of dough that you make. So this does give it a little bit of rise, but it also gives that yeasty uh, like aroma when you're eating bread. You want that kind of yeasty smell to it. Mm -hmm. So then we have some, uh, uh, unfree perfect baking powder. So the perfect baking powder is a late acting baking powder. So as this dough cooks, it will react later in the process to once again help create that lift. And we okay. want as much lift as we possibly can from this dough. Kind of like blowing up the tire. Exactly. So Keep as we go, we get the initial lift. We get a secondary from, uh, you know, there's the yeast, and then there's the baking soda, then the regular baking powder, and then we get the, uh, the late-acting baking powder. So we're doing everything we possibly can to grow that dough and make it as, as nice as possible. Okay. On top of that, we also have a I'm Free Perfect uh, gluten replacement. Now this is used in a lot of gluten-free, like breads and doughs. This is not gluten-free because we added the vital wheat gluten, but this will also help with that elasticity and making the structure on the inside of the dough so it doesn't just immediately collapse. Okay. Now with this dough, you do want to treat it very delicately. You don't want to open the oven and drop the temperature. You don't want to jostle it. You don't want to stick a thermometer in. When you're cooking it, cook it for an hour and then you can start temping it and making sure it's at the right temperature or else you're just going to get a massive collapse. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen because this is made you know, mainly of eggs and proteins and fats and things like that. Okay. So, 
we have transglutaminase TI. Now this is a uh, what's also known as meat glue. So transglutaminase will take the proteins that are found in the sodium caseinate and bond them better to the gluten and bond them better to the eggs and make sure everything finally sticks together and holds as we go. Mm -hmm. right. So we have that in there. All right. So then we also have our main ingredient. So this is another dry ingredient that we have. We have one more over there. So mm -hmm. this is our main ingredient for the entire thing. And this is going to be a little bit of an odd one. These are pork rinds. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are pork rinds that are ground up <laughs> and then they're made into a, a pork rind flour that that's going to be the base of our, our bread. This to me tastes delicious. This gives it a real kind of meaty uh, flavor. It gives it a really kind of uh, rich flavor. This bread doesn't necessarily taste like white bread, mm -hmm. but it, this for some reason the, the roastiness of the, the pork rinds really helps with making this a delicious bread. So I add that to it, right? Good, good. So we have that, we have this, have the TI, have that. and then we just have our regu regular baking powder that's in there. So, yeah. All right, so now we get to our liquids, and this is where it's going to be a little bit different. Our liquids consist of cheese, a whole lot of eggs, mm -hmm. and a little bit of water, about 200 grams of water. Right. Okay. And the reason why we're doing this is we want to have something that's going to structurally grow and, and hold on to it. So eggs are, are a protein that will coagulate over time or while heat is added and it'll make it really nice. The stringiness of the cheese is also going to help bond with that uh, transglutaminase TI. So I'm just going to put the cheese in immediately into this. I'm just going to get this mixed up. Shred your own cheese. Okay. If you don't use uh, you know, a block cheese, and you buy a pre-shredded, that pre-shredded is coated in microcrystalline cellulose. And that microcrystalline cellulose will kind of prevent the, the stringiness of the cheese. Mm -hmm. So you want to shred your own cheese. And you can just do any mild white cheddar. Uh, I like Monterey Jack. Uh, if you want to make, you know, experiment with like a sharper cheddar, you absolutely can. Mm -hmm. But as long as it is a block cheese, let's go. So once I get everything kind of coated in here, I'm going to add in my eggs. So everything's mixed together. I'm going to add in my eggs, right. and the eggs. Now the last thing I'm going to add is our uh, vinegar. So the reason why I'm going to add it last is I really want to get this mixed up nicely mm -hmm. before I add the vinegar, which is going to start the activation of my uh, baking soda. Okay. So I'm going to add in my water now. You can add all these three at the same time too, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to affect it. I just like to get them in there and get them mixed in, right? Okay. And this is going to be a batter, but once all these things start to activate and start to fully hydrate, it's going to stiffen up. So over time that gluten is going to develop, mm -hmm. right? Over time that uh, transglutaminase TI is going to start bonding with all the proteins in here and making a stiffer dough all while the rise of the initial yeast and the baking soda is happening. So a lot of things mm. happen in like the first uh, hour of proof and then we can put it into the oven and leave it there for one hour and then you're not gonna have to worry about it. Okay. And you'll be able to go. So it, it makes a very, let me just get a nice mix on it. It makes a very stiff kind of battery dough. Mm -hmm. So you're never gonna get like a kneadable dough Okay. with this. It's just not going to you happen. You can't shape it, you just dump it into a loaf. Yeah, you okay. could shape it if you were able to, you know, adjust the the hydration, but we're making a uh, sandwich bread here. Okay. So you want that, you know, slightly, um, you know, moist texture. If you wanted to make like a bagel, you could definitely try and you know, play with the hydration and do something mm. like that, but it's going to be difficult. This is a, uh, a newer way to make breads, so uh, it's going to take a little bit of testing, but I'm sure there's ways to do anything. Okay. So literally like this. Did you add like your this, vinegar? I didn't add my vinegar. Janie, <laughs> so helpful. There's so many things to this. I know. So, which is, uh, if you're like, I don't remember <laughs> all the things he just added, the recipe will be Vinegar. in the link in the description below. So, don't worry, this whole thing will be on our <laughs> blog. And then you can also watch the video of making yeah. this later this week on this channel or right now on our Instagram at Modernist Pantry. Yep. So, I'm just going to get that vinegar mixed in. And don't worry, you cannot overmix this. Okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's fat and eggs. So, let's get this out of the way. So, don't worry about it. So we get this out. Just get it into our container. And you can see it's starting to 
kind of solidify already because mm -hmm. of that transglutaminase. It works very quickly. Shape it to the dough. You obviously don't want a big air pocket at the bottom. Okay. But this will come up to the top of this bread pan. Now this is a four inch bread pan. So it will come all the way to the, to the edge. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's definitely one of the big differences between this bread and like yep. all the other keto breads that I've seen people make and they're all just so flat. Yeah, they become a really flat. I mean, it's, it's difficult. This is not an easy thing. But if you're able to, you know, work in ways to keep elevating that dough every step of the way, you're going to end up with a really nice bread. And we're able to make a really nice keto bread here cool. where it's sliceable. It has a great crumb. You know, it has a good stretch to it. Mm -hmm. And then you can make uh, a great Ooh. BLT, which we have here, nice yes. and stacked up. And you can pretty much do whatever you want with this. This makes great French toast. You could put this into a toaster. You can okay. see as you pull it apart, you can get, you know, like a nice pull. There's yeah. great texture on it. It's not crumbly or falling apart. You no, know what not I mean? at all. It's got it has like a good stretch to nice, it. It has like a nice chewiness. Yes. Yeah, so all those, the, the gluten in there and the sodium caseinate, working with it makes a really nice flavorful dough. It tastes very bread-like, I have to <laughs> say. I, I was very dubious about this, but this one tastes really bread-like. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's, it's amazing when you finally try it. And there's so many really delicious things in here with a lot of kind of like umami packed into them. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, it's, it's a heavier dough because you're using mainly fat, mm -hmm. but it's, I find it to be really delicious and yep. kind of craveable so yeah it's certainly great if you are on a keto diet and you've been missing that yeah. breadiness here's a great way to do it so you can get of course i already said this get today's recipe in the link in the description below and if you do try it let us know what you think it's always fun to like hear about people's experiences and if you find that you know you customize it you add something of your own that we didn't even think about let mm -hmm. us know what that is too that's always very cool to like hear about how people are adapting their recipes it's very exciting so I think that's pretty much for, for us for today. Um, give keto bread a try. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com We'll get recipes, ask a chef's tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen helping you create memorable and magical experiences.